mustard tree market and I'm here oh, don't mind my mess <laughs> I'm here tonight to uh, show you guys something that I like to do to my vintage furniture makeovers thanks for joining me tonight um, I want to show you guys something like how I finish my tops because it's a common question and you know me i don't bust out my sander and i don't look for perfection i'm not a like perfect precision like factory finish top maker and i like my tops to look like my pieces old and decrepit and a little bit broken so i want to show you guys how i do that it's super easy and it's super simple so uh, don't mind my mess i'm gonna pull you guys in closer but this is the piece i've been working on and it's my um, narnia inspired piece for children's bathroom and it's a mess over here <laughs> and i want to show you how i get a, a like a really cool romantic grunge top and this is painted in like white latex wall paint originally and i'm just going to go right over that so i'm going to show you how easy it is to get something cool and um, not have to put a whole lot of effort into it or try to make it perfect hey stacy hey lori hi guys thanks for joining me um so i'm gonna pull you up here la, 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 la. you know i move you guys all over the place because what i do what I do all right so I'm gonna pull you guys up here so you can just see the top of what I'm working on here la 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 <laughs> hopefully this works good okay hopefully you guys can see I'm not gonna be able to see all your comments right away, but I will come back and look at them and I'll go up there and check on them because you know me, I like to talk to you guys. Okay, so I've got all the products here I'm gonna use. I thought that looked really good, but now I'm gonna set them all on the floor because it's not very conducive to working. <laughs> all right, so we are going to take this latex paint painted piece, the sewing table. Oh, that went south. So first, we're gonna take this latex top and we're just gonna clean it. White lightning, okay? This is my Dixie Bell white lightning that I put into a spray bottle. It's like a TSB type cleaner. It's gonna get this really clean. So first you wanna clean it, okay? And this piece, you know, it's an old vintage sewing machine table, so it's got a lot of interesting stuff on it. So get all that off first. Make sure you don't have any like gummy stuff on your top. I'm taking it through the whole process, okay? All right, and then once you get it clean with white lightning, then we're going to rinse it off with vinegar and water. One of these is just water. That's the just water. I want the one that's vinegar and water. There we go. And that's what I rinse mine off with after I've used the white lightning. Hi guys. I'm sorry if you're talking to me and I can't hear you or I mean see you but I don't have my glasses on because it makes a glare and you're kind of far away so I rinse off the white lightning you always want to rinse off your white lightning so your paint will stick right 
And I like to use vinegar and water because the vinegar cleans it once again. I like taped my door shut because we're kind of on a little incline here. All right, now she's clean. <laughs> hey June, hey from Vegas. Good evening, Ashley from St. Louis. You're close by, girl, in Kansas City. Oh, hey, J-Po. All right, all right. So, got her clean with white lightning, rinsed her off with vinegar and water, and now we're just gonna go in with paint, guys. Now, I, I don't stress. Look at this piece. See how there's nicks, there's indentions, there's, oh, great. That's like candle wax. You don't want to get that candle wax off. <laughs> okay, get the candle wax off. But I don't care about any of these scratches. I don't care about any of these indentions. I don't care about any of this peeling paint. I don't care about any of this, okay? It's gonna be, it's gonna be part of the character. Part of what makes a romantic grunge top is to just let the character be because every one of these nicks and scratches was some mom like cutting up a Halloween costume to sew for her baby. Um, you never know. A grandmother like making her granddaughter's bridal gown. I imagine the most beautiful things people are doing with this, but they all have a meaning. It's part of the character of the piece. And I like to preserve the character. So that's kind of my, my thing, okay? So, the color that I'm using, this is my custom blend. Um, it's what I used for the lightest color on this piece. Now, I don't know why I tend to go with a lighter color for my tops. So of my colors that I use, I usually use like three different colors. Um, I tend to go with the lighter color for my top. I'm not quite sure why. I think I like the contrast of it against the black wax. So I'm using my lime that I made and I made it using, um, I believe like four parts of tree frog green, one part, no, sorry, four parts of Daisy, Dixie Bell's color Daisy is a yellow and one part tree frog green. That's how I got this. So that's no science, but there's, there's my story. I'm sticking to it. Okay, <laughs> and all my brushes are dirty, so I'm just using a random brush I've got because I need clean brushes. I literally have like probably 40 brushes dirty right now at my little brush cleaning station. It's a sad, sad thing. I'm a really bad brush mom. So doesn't matter what brush you use, just get that paint on. You're gonna mess it all up, so it makes no difference. Um, if you were trying to get a pristine, or more like smooth, pristine surface, the Dixie Bell Dixie Mud can fill in all these little cracks. It's different than like a wood filler. It's a soft, um, more of a pliable, not stinky, not toxic, um, kind of a wood putty. So you could actually fill this in, and I've done that on pieces, and just kind of like rubbed a thin coat across the whole top and let it dry and then sand it back. And that will give you a smoother finish if that's what you're going for. I very rarely do that, but say I have like some crazy big gouges across the middle, like somebody keyed my car type of thing on my furniture piece, that might be a little bit distracting. So in that case, like I had one that was like, the buffet clearly been used for like a butcher block top. And so I did fill that, those big gouges in. But typically you're gonna have, you know, the normal wear and tear, the normal like gouges and nicks and scrapes and such. And those I love. I don't know why I love them, I just do. So I had to figure out a way because I don't love just one flat color on the top. I don't love like a flat brown on top. 
I don't like sanding my pieces and staining them because that's a lot of work. And I just wanted something that fit my my look, my brand, my romantic grunge. So this is what I came up with a while back. And I mean, maybe somebody else has done it, probably. But to me, it was something I hadn't seen, so and it worked for my brand and my look, and it was simple and easy and effective. So I just paint one coat on uh, the color. Usually it ends up being my lightest color. I'll come up and see if I have any questions. While well, I'm real quick, like wiping my little rim, make sure I have like no crazy drips going on on top of my finish. And if you have like a big gouge of like ripped veneer or something, you could totally Dixie mud that on the corner or whatever prior to this painting. How'd that happen? That was weird. All right. Hi, Sue. Hello, Melissa. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey, Carrie. All right, guys. Let's check and see if I had any questions. If you guys have questions, tag, tag me or um, message me, of course. So. This is the piece. It's that little green number. I'm doing my romantic grunge finish on the top. I'm showing you guys the easiest way to do these quick um, romantic grunge tops without a whole lot of work. Hey, Alicia. Hey, Aaron. Oh, not even saying hi to me. I get how it goes. Melissa's on. Don't say hi to me. <laughs> totally kidding. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and shoot this with a heat gun try to dry it a little bit so I can show you guys the next step of my little quick romantic crunch top. This does not have to even be perfect because we're going to mess it all up. Okay. And I only do one coat because it's part of the part of the look. I'm hoping it'll dry really fast. And I'm doing this right over latex paint. I'm not scared. It's gonna be just fine. I'm not worried about it at all. Dixieville paint is a chalk mineral paint and it will stick to surfaces like this. And I'm never going for a pristine finish. So there's that. Do you know how to know if it's dry or not? Quick tip, a little, a little knowledge for the night. Um, once you're, you're drying it or whatever, you're trying to figure out like, how do I know if it's dry? Um, if you put your hand on it and it's cool, then it's probably still wet. Um, it should be like room temperature, you know, or warm after a heat gun if it's dry. If it's cool, it's probably still wet. The more you know. So, this feels pretty good. Feels pretty room temperature now. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Here, right here is a little bit cool, so that's probably where it's a little wetter. And I'm using the Surf Prep um, Rad Pad, they're called. Super fine. I'm gonna see if this does it. And I'm just gonna go over this and kind of let some of the character pop. That's the point, okay? We're accentuating character, not trying to cover it up. We're just going with the character. We're gonna love the character and we're gonna appreciate it. And instead of trying to cover it up, we're gonna we're gonna own it. We're gonna let her pop, okay? So I try to keep this in pretty good strokes back and forth. Um, that's really loud, sorry. I don't do circulars. I don't go back and forth. I try to keep it typically back and forth. Okay? This is not working. I need to get a heavier sand grit. I'm going around the edges. 
Mm, well, actually it might work. If you feel like you want more to pop through, you can get a heavier grit sandpaper and more will pop. So I kind of might like this. So I'm going to keep going a little bit longer and see. And I can always go up in sandpaper. Can't really go backwards. So I always start out super fine. And if I want more of the grain to pop, then I'll go with a heavier grit. I hope that's not terrible on your ears. I'm sorry. It's the only way to show you. Yeah, that's going to work actually, I think. Now, if this was a wood top and it wasn't painted in latex paint, I might go a little heavier grit just to let some of that wood pop through. But since this is like a latex paint that's going to pop through, I'm not going to like force a bunch of the white popping through. I do kind of go over my edges pretty good. That's what I'm doing right here is getting those little edges. I'm not pressing on the middle part. I'm just pressing with my sandpaper over these edges to kind of get them exposed. Uh, I think I might need a little bit heavier grit. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> All right, let me grab. Here we go. All right, here's a surf prep medium. I'm gonna try this and go a little bit deeper. I want that sander bad, yeah. Ditto, ditto. All right, so I'm gonna take this surf prep rad pat medium. That's better. Sorry if that's really loud, I'm sorry. I'm trying to be fast. Sorry guys, I don't know if that's really loud. Sorry, can you hear me? Some are going to pull more than others. This one's not pulling near as much as I would have thought for one coat on latex. This just proves my theory, guys, that if you're scared to paint over latex with Dixie Bell paint, this is one thin coat, guys. And I've seen it back with two kinds of paper, paper now, and look. <laughs> and it was barely dry. It's hardly even popping through. Like, this puppy does not want that to come off. It doesn't want to come off. So then you wipe it off with a shop towel to get that excess powder off. Whew. And if you go in with a heavier grit, you could really make lines across this if you wanted. You could make this be as distressed looking on the top as you want. Now this is feeling really smooth, okay? Because I'm using pretty pretty fine grit. Um, I could really make this have crazy lines, but I'm gonna stand back and look at it a little bit and decide. It's definitely got more wear and tear right there, but that should be normal and natural. <sighs> kind of trying to see what this looks like with the whole piece, because this is a soft amount of distressing. Could be a lot more. That's so cute. Thanks, Donna. It's fine. Thanks, Aaron. You guys think it's good to go? It's gonna drive some of you guys crazy because it's not that um, like uniform. It's gonna be just a little bit in the front. I guess think I kind of want to put it more. I'm gonna put a little bit more on because I know I'm gonna regret it if I don't. Okay. Don't hate me. I'm not quite sure how this whole thing happened. All right, I'm gonna go a little bit harder on sandpaper. Hang tight. I want a little bit more lines and a little bit more 
cohesiveness. Bust out the big guns. All right. I'm gonna do some like 100 grit sandpaper. Girl, do you. <laughs> Thanks, Colleen. You did more on the front since your last live. I wanna see. Oh, Wendy, I will show you. I will show you. I'll bring it in when we're all done here. All right, so. Yeah, there we go. Whoop, there she is. One cut addictive all guys, and I'm like puffing and puffing to get distressed over latex shiny paint. Just so you know. So what this is doing now is it's pulling all my all my like bumps and ridges to the surface, some of the wood grain. And I'm getting focusing on my corners and edges to create my Romantic grunge top. All right, I think this is about perfect. Yep. I'm just focusing on those edges right there. All right. <laughs> All right, let's see. Yep, that's perfect. All right, so you can do as little as you, might, as you want, heavy as you want. Kind of how heavy or great of sandpaper. This might be my favorite piece of yours. Oh, thank you, Brandy. Green is my fave too. All right, so I'll bring you in and show you. So can you see how that is? How it's got like lines all the way across, okay? Thank you for doing a top or seeing anyone do the tops. Thank you. That's what I was thinking. People don't like to do the tops because it's not as fun or cool looking, right? So see how these lines are? See how we're letting all these things pop, okay? We're letting all the perfection imperfections pop, okay? And I promise you it's going to look cool. Next step. Sorry, I hope you're not getting dizzy. La, la, la. Next step is Dixabelle Best Stain Wax in Black. Okay, this is the next thing. Oh shoot, okay, there we go. I was like, where's my wax brush? Okay. I'm like out of breath, that like wore me out, guys. some mom juice <laughs> all right so we're gonna go in now with best stain wax black it's Dixie Bell's black wax I'm gonna make sure to get it all over me and we're gonna kind of work in small sections here what I will probably do <clears throat> I'll probably pull this wax down to this lip okay but I'm not going to try to do that now because it'll be too hard to do when I'm up here. So, work in small sections. It's the best way to not let your wax. Whoa! No, 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 no. Go back to your home. Okay. Work in a section. Get your shop towel out. Wax on. Wax off. Wax on. Wax off. All right. Literally wipe it off. Literally wipe it off. Literally wipe it off. Pay close attention to your edge right here because that's where your wax tends to gum up. All right. Keep going. Keep going. I promise it's gonna look pretty. This is how I do all my tops. I promise it's gonna look pretty. Oops, went too far. All right, work in small sections. Do your brush in circular motions. 
I like to use a natural brush or brush. All my brushes are dirty, but I would usually use like the bell brush. Okay. <laughs> All right, wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. Immediately wipe it all off. Scrub it off, scrub it off. So fresh and so clean, clean. Get it all off, get it all off. Whoa. Guys, pass this video along. Pass it along. Take one down, pass it around. I promise you it's gonna look super red. If you can't tell, it's gonna look really red. You're gonna be like, OMG, that looks so cool. Okay. <sighs> Keep going. I think I can get this last whole section at once. Pretty skinny now. It's a skinny section. And like I said, I would probably carry this over the edge afterwards. I might. Make it look like it's the top piece of the wood, you know, like an aged old top. And like I said, I typically use the lightest color of paint that I'm working with in my piece for this, because it'll pop more. Holy guacamole. Holy guacamole. All right, make sure your rag is pretty clean. If your wax start, if your ugh, if your shop towel starts getting gummy with wax, it's not going to work very good. Get a fresh one because you're going to like end up smearing wax instead of wiping wax off. See how that works? Yep. Get a freshie. Get a freshie. If you're like, why is it just smearing everywhere? Get a new shop towel. Make sure your shop towel is flat when you're wiping it. Flat. Okay, don't use a gumpy side, use a flat side. Otherwise you're gonna wax in a textury way instead of a smooth way. Oh yeah, this is perfect, guys. It's perfect. It is really perfect. See, I'm like literally buffing all that wax off, all of it off, because best thing wax, you wanna get it off within 15 minutes, but for this technique, you wanna get it all off right away. I don't want any gummy on top, okay? Bada bean, bada boom. All right, I'm gonna show you guys. Boom. All right. Let's see if I have any questions. Hey girl, looks super cool. Thanks, Aspen. Hey girl, hey. Um, I love when you sing. Oh, thanks, Christine. <laughs> I, I don't even realize I'm doing it. Tyler, loving the colors. Thank you. Hey, Christine. All right, guys. So I'm gonna pull you in and let you see the finished product, okay? This is super cool. Um, I'm gonna probably turn you around. I know that's annoying, but I need to be able to see what you're saying. Okay? Okay. All right, I'm pulling you guys around. All right. So, here's the piece, right? This grungy, Narnia inspired piece. Okay. Ooh, you don't see that part. Sneak peek. <laughs> and here's the top. You guys, look how cool this is. I hope you can see. Don't mind all the mess everywhere on the floor. You're not supposed to see that. So look at this, okay? You take the lightest color you're dealing with in your piece. This lime green is my lightest color. And you apply one thin coat over white latex, guys. This is crappy white latex. Sand it back, start with a fine grit sandpaper, work your way up until you have the right amount of distress, okay? Take the Dixie Belle Best Stain Wax in Black. Wax on. Wax off, wipe it all back, okay? 
Pay close attention to these edges. Let them pop. Let them scrape. Let them pop. All right. See that? Look how cool. That's all the black wax that's like fell into those little crevices. It highlights every little nick and scratch from grandma and it's just amazing. I love it. And you'll see there's more scratches in front because that's where she worked, you know. This is one of those sewing tables that like it pulls up. So for real skis, this was a used gal. And so the key is now I want this to last forever, right? So what I'm going to do, good question, Tracy. Am I going to clear coat after? Good girl. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this um, dry overnight, okay? So I wiped all of the wax off, okay? All of it off. And I even buffed it off with the clean shop towel after, okay? Now, tomorrow, I'm going to let this like just dry a little bit overnight because there shouldn't be any wax. Like, it's just literally in the crevices, okay? And I, sand I sanded the wax off. Like, I sanded it. Then I waxed. So, I'm, I'm good to go. Now, tomorrow, after this is dried overnight, I will go this, I will go over this with a clear coat flat. The Dixie Bowl's clear coat flat, one coat, okay? Why I do that is because it seals up this mineral chalk paint, okay? This chalk mineral paint. It seals it up and gets it ready for my gator hide. And then my gator hide goes on like a dream, guys, okay? And then I do two coats of gator hide on top of the clear coat flat, okay? Then I have it to be water resistant. It's going to be strong. You can set a coffee cup on it. My baby can set his bath toys on it, whatever. It'll be good to go. So tomorrow, I wait for this to dry. Tomorrow morning, I will probably throw a clear coat flat on it, let that dry for an hour, and then I will do a layer of gator hide, a thin layer of gator hide. I'll let that dry for an hour and I'll put another coat of gator hide on and I will let that cure for a few days. Then it'll go into that fairy tale Narnia bathroom. It'll last forever and it'll look the age of the piece. And how easy was that? There was no like heavy electric sanding. There was no filling in stuff. It looks the age of the piece, but also look how pretty. Look how pretty. And the black wax makes it get different tones and different depth. And the edges, oh, the edges. Love it. Okay. So I always do clear coat flat first, Crystal, and then I do the gator hide. It is the easiest way because gator hide wants to seep in the porous surfaces and it makes it hard to like paint across. So that's why I do that first. You're so welcome. Could you do this with red paint and do you need the white hood underneath? No, Sharon, I do this over like wood pieces. You could do it with red paint. I've done it with pink paint. I've done it with apricot. I always go with the lightest color, but you can do a dark color too. You just won't see so much of the variation. The variation really pops when you use a light color with that black wax. So I like a light color. So yeah, I mean, if I had a red piece, I might use, I might use apricot or something or tea rose to do this. Um, let's see if I have any more questions here. Thank you, Holly. Um, all right. I think I got all the questions. If you guys have any questions, hit me up. I did tag right here the link of the entire recipe, this lime green, how it's made, what I used. And you can also click on the link and you can order it all and have it directly shipped to your door and try this out. And like I said, this can be any color. So do this on any current piece you're working on. Use the lightest color. Hit me up and say, hey, I'm doing this, you know, combination. What color should I use? I'll tell you. Get yourself the best stain wax, clear coat flat, and gator hide, and some rad pads. You'll have a cool look. Are you going to wax any on the front? Um, I actually had to do clear coat flat on the front because I used some IOD transfers which have to be clear coat flat first before you apply the transfer and then clear coat flat afterwards. So I did clear coat flat the front but that's why I love clear coat flat because it looks like wax because it literally makes it have the most matte finish ever. So that's why I love clear coat flat. All right so if you have any more questions feel free to 
Otherwise, I'm going to go and have um, the rest of my glass of wine. And please pass this along if you know anybody that might like it. And I appreciate you using my link and supporting my small business if you want to try this out for one of your tops. Thank you, guys. See you later. Bye.